Guys, SafeMoon CEO has exposed the true nature of Operation Phoenix. This has been a long time coming. Therefore, Safe Moon Army, be sure to watch this movie through to the conclusion, as each second is jam-packed with vital information for you. Let us proceed. Disclaimer. How are you doing, Safe Moon Army? It's wonderful to have you back. If this is your first visit, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This way, you'll be notified immediately when I upload a new video to the channel. Let's jump right into today's video. The Safe Moon community has been anticipating the beginning of Operation Phoenix, which is scheduled to begin shortly. The Safe Moon team has declined to disclose any details regarding the initiative. As a result, conjecture has been rampant throughout the community. Yesterday, Safe Moon CEO John Carney finally addressed these rumors, which is the subject of today's video. Therefore, stay tuned until the end of this video to learn exactly what he meant and what Operation Phoenix is all about. As I already stated, there have been numerous guesses. Some are probable, while others are improbable. I'll walk you through the top candidates over the following several minutes, and then we'll see what CEO John Kearney had to say about these hypotheses in the end. Let's begin with this one, which was provided by Plastic Lawfulness shortly after Safe Moon began. Plus, you've almost certainly heard Kearney speak about Safe Moon as the engine that powers the unbanked's independence. As a result, Plastic Lawfulness began his investigation by learning about the Gambian population, where they ran across their first roadblock due to the way Wikipedia divides age groups. Anyway, after some computations, they arrived at a figure of 5.4 billion adults. After this is established, Plastic Lawfulness defines what it means to be unbanked. Additionally, it refers to adults who do not have their own bank accounts, as defined by Wikipedia. This could be for a variety of reasons, including a lack of access, a lack of a required minimum balance, distrust in the financial system, or a lack of government-issued identification. So, how many unbanked are there? According to some sources, the amount is 2 billion, but the World Bank estimates it to be 1.7 billion which indicates that approximately 31.5% of people worldwide are unbanked. If even 1% of this demographic adopts Safe Moon as an alternative money, this is a significant milestone for the token. Thus, here is one Redditor's speculation. I would argue that the team is attempting to transition from cryptocurrency to a form of fiat currency, particularly as a substitute for local currencies in various African, South American, and Asian countries. Many of those countries lack functional financial infrastructure and frequently rely on the USD as their primary currency or gold standard, despite the fact that they have their own currency. Additionally, with a supply cap of 25 trillion safe moon following the burn, the available safe moon would be about 20 times the quantity of USD and EUR in circulation. Both currencies have a total cash supply of 1.2 trillion. To simplify, SafeMoon intends to be a fraction of the cost of USD, EUR depending on the use case. Finally, this would imply the following. Individuals in developing economies would choose to use SafeMoon over USD since it is freely available, safe, and offers financial services that they currently lack access to. Individuals in prosperous economies would hodl and maintain the currency's stability as a result of the reflections and their passive gain analogous to government bonds but with the added bonus of being able to acquire additional tokens. That is one theory. However, if I may add, you will recall that Kearney previously stated that Safe Moon was not attempting to displace any country's currency. Thus, does this rule out this theory? You would have to keep an eye out to find out. Now, let us hear J-Rodder 102's theory. We are all familiar with the Phoenix fable or myth. Essentially, a bird that rises from the ashes with renewed youth to begin another cycle. I find it fascinating that the developers are working on large projects such as the wallet and exchange, both of which would add significant value and utility to the Safe Moon token on their own. They are, however, describing a highly classified project, one that they place a higher premium on than an exchange. To me, the only thing larger than an exchange is Safe Moon's decision to run its own blockchain rather than continuing to rely on the BSC. Thus, the Phoenix would represent the renewal or rebirth of a stronger, more capable safe moon following the destruction of its BSC links and migration to its own. If this is the case, disregard the 10 cents price target. 
this coin will be aiming for a $1 price point since it will be equipped with the blockchain technology necessary to sustain a broad spectrum of liquidity. You could call it a guess, but it's a very logical one for me. With all the excitement and revolutionary claims, the only thing greater than hyping up a wallet is hyping up an exchange, and the only thing bigger than hyping up an exchange is hyping up its own blockchain. Is this, then, the correct theory? Keep an eye out to find out. Now, here's another notion that, I'll concede, appears quite plausible. Operation Phionix is all about linking windmills to IoT throughout the Gambia, providing internet connectivity to those who have been without it for so long. Additionally, it establishes an energy industry and a functional method of burning safe moon while providing the country with a stable cryptocurrency. If this approach is successful, it has the potential to be scaled globally. It is only logical to begin with a tiny country willing to engage in broad adoption. Consider all the obscure information we've been provided. Moreover, if it is turning, it is burning. To be sure, a windmill on its own is unlikely to be capable of buying and selling safe moon. However, a windmill powering a cell tower that connects an entire country to the electrical and cellular grids would. Access fees would be used to purchase, burn safe moon. Users would pay for network access and safe moon, which the country would adopt as a secondary currency. This is the only logical direction for us to take. John maintains that it is an ecology. To be honest, it makes perfect sense to have an exchange, a new chain upon which others might build. But we get the fees, a viable use case, a network of windmills, and the internet to power it all. If this is the direction they are taking, and if the Gambian government assists in bringing it to fulfillment, there is no telling how large Safe Moon will become. Generational wealth is no laughing matter. This is an intriguing theory. But before we spill the beans, this channel is now running a daily giveaway of 1 million Safe Moon. To enter to win a million dollars as a Safe Moon millionaire, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment with the hashtag hashtag safe moon. Best of luck. Now, we have two more possibilities to investigate, and I believe that one of these is the most plausible candidate. And you may agree with me once you learn about these theories. The first is about the Gambia's TAF city. Remember when John Kearney discussed macro IoT and how information and clues were readily available? TAF city will be a completely self-sufficient smart city. Powered by renewable energy and fully connected add-ons, they will also provide jobs for over 60k people and education for the country's youth, as well as agricultural production where everyone grows their own food using smart city products and energy. The president indicated that this was from the 2018 to 2021 National Development Plan, and we know John Kearney has been assisting them since 2018. Consider for a moment a metropolis powered and run entirely by Safe Moon technology. Additionally. They emphasize that this is just the beginning and that other African countries will seek to collaborate with them on the development of their own sustainable towns and homes. The implications for how quickly this can scale are incomprehensible. The blockchain and exchange are insignificant and in compared to the project at hand. I'm sure there's a lot more than we're aware of. Now, before we move on to what Karani stated, the final possibility we will examine is the Starlink X Safe Moon Alliance theory. I discussed this notion in great length in a recent video meticulously detailing all the conceivable interconnections and connections between Safe Moon and SpaceX. However, you'd need to watch the film to get the whole explanation. However, here is a summary. Papa serves as the connective tissue between Safe Moon and Elon Musk's Starlink. As you may recall, Papa was a part of Musk's pet project, the Doge One mission. He also worked on the Safe Moon blockchain, which is almost certainly complete now that Papa has left the Safe Moon project. Now, keep in mind that Musk's Starlink project seeks to bring internet access to everyone, particularly people in remote locations, which is fairly similar to the few details we've received concerning Safe Moon's Operation Phionix. Thus, it is possible that Papa, who has previously worked with Musk, assisted in the building of the Safe Moon blockchain in order for it to become the network upon which Starlink runs. Now, there are other additional theories, but I limited the possibilities for the sake of the video. However, what has SafeMoon CEO, John Kearney, revealed? In the SafeMoon Discord, someone inquired as to whether the crew had already hinted at what Phionix is. Kearney then responded, Indeed, we did. Someone had already correctly guessed it. I am not going to say who. Which of these theories, in your opinion, is correct? Or are you aware of any other plausible hypotheses? Then please leave a comment with your opinions. With that said, we appreciate your time watching today's video. 
If you like this video, please like it and leave a comment in the space below. This is quite beneficial in terms of the YouTube algorithm. If you're a real safe moon fan, you owe it to yourself to see this video.